Hello. Hello, everyone. Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> Manic. That's absolutely right. What you what you're seeing there is is absolutely right. We're going to be giving it a go. going to be pretty exciting at least I hope I hope you will be excited and intrigued I can't even beat crazed cat well I probably can't beat the manic one but hey it's worth trying it's worth trying where better where better than a stream to give something like that a go I, f I feel Reggie you mispronounced my name when I subbed well I apologies I can't I but also, I couldn't can't imagine that Mark Zero D is a correct pronunciation. It's just a literal one, one where you know you can't be blamed for Belt and Braces' approach of just just being specifically literal. You know, um, right? Okay. So the last time this was on, and I can't actually remember when that was. I gave this a little go and came up with this here strategy. We got five, six meat shields, including this handsome young boy here. Um, what a guy. <laughs> and then Bahama and Aruran. And I think the idea is to pair it up with the CPU, which I think I will be doing. But more on this in a second. Because... Thank you very much to Chris Gray 26. I send thanks for subscribing with your Twitch Prime. Thank you for swinging your Twitch Prime subscription my way, Chris. Much appreciated. That's very nice of you. Um, my ultimate plan, of course, is to do this no gacha. And with the stuff I currently have, Probably not possible. With Prisoner Cat? Probably possible. Although, of course, I don't have that yet. And as it's January, that's something I'll need to look up about sorting out. Can you attempt the Miss Sign Cheese? Maybe, right? You know, it's all up for grabs. It's all possible, isn't it? Um, thank you for helping me get the first crazed cat. Oh, I'm glad the beginner guide helped. No troubles. Oh, yeah. Speaking of, like, you're welcome, or no troubles, which is, like, I don't know, like, a mix 
I was listening to um, a podcast today. This is where I imagine the majority of you just sort of switch off and ignore me. But for those who might be interested in linguistics, stay listening. Um, you'll probably know that I um, I watch a bit of Tom Scott because we all love Tom Scott. And in his sort of language file stuff, he, he references um, his co-writer's podcast and it's called Lingthusiasm. Anyway, I was listening to a little bit of that because it's interesting. You know, I always think linguistics is one of those subjects where it's very interesting and that is the case for a lot of people who don't do it and I'm one of those people who don't do it academically. Um, and the sort of you're welcome uh, after that sort of thing or no worries comes after a um, I can't believe you don't know who Tom Scott is. I hate to sound like those awful people on Twitter but educate yourself uh, and by that I mean go on the internet go to his channel and have a little watch. Tom Scott is Pog. Absolutely. And do you know what else is Pog? Ben is found, who has just said that. I'm so good at segues, aren't I? <laughs> has just subscribed with the Primes. Thank you very much, Ben is found, for swinging your Twitch Prime subscription my way. A little bit of a tongue twister, that one. But I feel like it's it's nice that people do that. So I kind of, I owe it to them to try that tongue twister. Thank you very much for swinging that my way. Um, fun fact that I didn't realise for a very long time. Segway is not spelt like the brand Segway of those, those fun little two-wheeled things. It's actually S-E-G-U-E. -E. Um, not an English word, I don't think. Um, and I assume that's where the brand Segway got its idea from. But yes, yeah, Segway is spelt as Marp Zero D, which is definitely how you pronounce that. Ah, French word, there we go. Did think, but I didn't want to assume. That is how it is actually spelt. And I didn't realise that for the longest time. But that is actually how Segway is, is spelt. It's, it's a thing within itself. A Segway is how you move along to the next thing. Hence, probably, why the brand used that word and spelt it differently with, I guess, the actual word way in it, which is meaningful in its own sense. So this is all, like, really interesting. But even that is sort of besides the point. Um, we're just going to restart the battle. Um, the point that I was kind of... Wait, I've just forgot. We can't do that anymore. <laughs> we we can't do that anymore because it's a manic stage. Oh, I am I am disappoint, ladies and gentlemen. I am I am disappoint. Oh well. <laughs> Whoops. Right, we'll cover the fact that Lils aren't Gatcha in a second. I will finish the linguistics point. Anyway, I was listening to, to this episode of Lingthusiasm. And they were talking about phatic expressions. Interesting things they are. There's a Tom Scott video on them as well. Basically, they're like, all right, nice weather, awful weather. Thanks, well not thanks, but you know, you're welcome. No worries, you know. Basically kind of meaningless expressions um, where we're not actually using those words to communicate the meaning of those words we're just actually saying them to sort of acknowledge that the other person just simply exists. Just kind of very autopilot -y small talk. Quite an interesting thing. And it was interesting that they referenced thank you, you're welcome as part of it. And they're making the point that it kind of, this has morphed a little bit, the thank you, you're welcome, to not many people saying you're welcome anymore. And instead saying no problem or no worries. And I realised that I, as they suggested some people get confused by that, I get confused by that. If someone says to me, no problem, instead of you're welcome, I'd be like, well, I know there's no problem. I just thanked you. And they make the point that it, it does seem confusing because you're like, well, well, why are they suddenly saying that? So I just found that because there's a little personal relatable experience that they say um, rather than you're welcome, people say not no problem or no worries, like throws you off because it throws me off as well. And then I realised when I was thanking someone in the stream that I said 
no problems. Even though actually I would really want to say, you're welcome. Because that makes a lot more grammatical sense. And, you know, phatic expressions, I, I don't want to, I don't, don't want to do them. I like the phrase, all right. You just say to someone, all right. You sort of nod your head slightly. If you got glasses, sort of grab the edge of the frame and go, all right. And just sort of move your head down and up. You're like, all right, like that. That's my favorite phatic expression. Um, but yeah, the you're welcome thing, I really wish I would just say you're welcome because it's just the far superior way of saying it because at least that makes grammatical sense. So I just thought that was interesting. Um, and if you find linguistics interesting, lingthusiasm is an interesting one. And Tom Scott is just an interesting one for basically anything. Um, when you go and play, if you're on a stream like that, you might not like it here. Um, I will uh, get into the battle, but it will take a bit of preparation. There will be periods of talking like there have been here. Um, and that is just the case. Uh, and, and, you know, it's not a video. It's not edited. It's happening in real time while I talk to you in real time. And that, I think, is one of the key purposes of a live stream is to interact with your audience. Uh, and if you don't do that, there's no point in having a live stream. So that's kind of what I prioritise here. I mean, people probably reference the times I'm not looking at chat, but it is kind of difficult to look at a phone and have eyes on top of my forehead at the same time. But it's about interaction, I feel. Here's an interaction. Static underscore pickle man has cheered us 10 head-waving pogs. <laughs> so thank you for them. Um... And then another 10 comparatively vanilla bits. <laughs> so thank you for that. Uh, to, uh, to get into first place, quite possibly. Oh, no, it's happened three times, look. Thank you very much for that. I'm on to 30 bits. Right, okay. So, Deathhawk. And it's no continues, which I forgot, which is why that first attempt was so uneventful. What I want to do with it is CPU it, basically, because that is always going to be the most efficient way to do it, right? And it would be nice to be able to just constantly sort of restart the level and go back into it but there we go should you use king dragon you probably should but mine's so far away from king dragon and i want to preserve the low levels if i can that i'm just not using dragon at the moment that's my plan do you have mina i don't and maybe that will eventually be necessary but then also as tycoon man suggests mina's pretty hard to get uh, you know, like, I've forgotten what even subchapter it is. Too far away, it's just completely out of my mind. It's way beyond anything I think of. Um, it, that's going to be, within itself, extremely difficult to get to. Right. Okay. So... I want to get my eye in before I put items on. Because as you can see, I do not have many items. Not a huge number. Uh, and so, I'm just going to do uh, a full-on attempt here. And see how we do. Just give it a go. Okay. Oh, Thaumaturge would be lovely, wouldn't it? Owen. <laughs> Shadow gal. <laughs> That might that might have helped you a little bit. That might have helped you a tiny bit. I'm like, yeah, Thaumaturge, them some good strats. Minimal gacha, minimal gacha. And then you're like, Shadow Gal. Which itself could be a fatic greeting. Hold the edge of your glasses frame, nod your head and go, Shadow Gal. And they know what you're talking about. You're acknowledging the existence of a fellow Battlecats player. <laughs> Hello, my Shadow Gal. Um, my gal. But yeah, that probably helped you a little bit. Um, there we go. 
Didn't know you have a Twitch. I do. Well, I guess you know now, right? Um... The reason I stream on Twitch is because, in case anyone's wondering, because I should probably know that no one's actually asked that question. Maybe it was implied in the didn't know you streamed on Twitch. Mutt Razor. Love that. We're getting that back. My favourite. Um, the reason I stream on Twitch is because Twitch have more ways of donating, including free ways and practically free ways of ads for bits and Twitch Prime subscriptions. And Cheering Bits is a much more efficient way of donating than YouTube Super Chat, of which they take a much larger cut. So, um, overall, Twitch has more ethical policies on donating. And so that is why I use Twitch instead. I mean, I also, and this is a kind of laziness point, so you shouldn't really bear that in mind as a big thing. Can't be bothered to learn YouTube's new streaming layout. Um, and Twitch's one is probably better and definitely more customizable. I really love how you can move your panels around on Twitch. Um, and not like the ones below the video feed. I mean like the ones where I have my chat, where I have the activity feed. And I can choose what gets on the activity feed. And my little menu for how I put polls up and what options I want to be on there. It's nice, very customizable. Uh, what isn't nice, quite so nice... Uh, is that we're, we're getting we're getting pretty decimated pretty decimated by this young boy and this is why we really need to be able to just continually try again you might want to use prisoner yeah i mean i, I want to get i want to get prisoner don't you worry about that um i think that's a bit to usa only unfortunately they do seem to be it's very sad very sad um, in this meantime, uh, Static Pickle Man has been making my job of tallying up bit cheers for my donations charts very difficult because they're all in separate amounts. Um, but thank you nonetheless for all your recent cheers. Um, so, I feel like... I probably need to just go in with the items. Do you have Crazed Dragon? I mean, I do. And we could use that. But I'm thinking of having this leg combo up here for... Um, uh, for knockback from the Aruran. But equally, right, we could, we could put Crazed Dragon in there. I don't know how the finances will hold up. And Static Pickleman cheers us 70 bits, thank you. And says, all right, I'm out now. Wow, well, quite quite the burst of cheering. Thank you very much. Five meat shields are fine, yeah. And to be fair, the little cat is, is just, well, it's just sad. <laughs> How do I watch out of bits? I think you need to be in America. I don't know whether a VPN works um, for getting on to uh, ads for bits. But an example of a free VPN you could use to try is Windscribe. That's the one that a friend of mine recommended to me. Um, how much is a bit worth? That's a good question. So... Um, each bit is a penny, or as it's measured in dollars, a cent. Um, and the creator gets one cent per bit. Uh, and buying 100 bits is $1.40 or something like that. And, I mean, people who have actually bought bits will be able to shed light on this. Um, and the creator would get one dollar from a hundred bits. Apparently though, if you buy a thousand bits and you sort of buy bits separately and you can give them to whoever you like, and then Twitch sort of taxes it at the, the source of buying them, um, you can get them for a lot cheaper per bit. Um, cost me two pounds for a 95 bits? Ooh, uh. 
Well, I'll... I mean, that's not good. Huh. I'll screenshot that and um, keep that in my informational informations. But that's, that's not good at all. Oh, well. That was the information that I could find. Um... Difficult, isn't it? Do you know what I've realised? I show you audio capture has decided that it's on strike. Let's not have it on strike. And maybe just work. There we go. Okay. Where do I buy bits? That I don't know. I assume it's in the little chat bar. Um, there's a little face and then to the left of it there's a bits icon. Yeah, and it says to me you cannot cheer in your own channel. So I assume that's where you use bits. And maybe you buy them there as well. I don't know. Well, anyways, this is no gacha. It is. That's the attempt. That's what we're hoping. Um. Although, it's a, it's a bit of a yikes. Bit of a yikes from me. And what we might have to do is go to the lucky ticket stage if that's on. Um. And... Uh, try and just do lucky lucky ticket stages and get on. It can't be me who hears just me who hears some annoying background noise. Right. Can you describe the noise, please? Might be my computer going mad with its fans. I mean, it does that. You know. It says, when I tried to watch an ad, before continuing to watch ads for bits, we remind you that bits acceptable use policy applies to your participation within this feature and bits you may obtain. As a reminder, you may not obtain bits to cheer on your own channel via this feature. Collect bits via this feature through use of multiple counts, robots, or other automated means. Yeah, there was a, there was a problem with people doing that on Twitch, but I mean, a VPN, if it works, wouldn't wouldn't come under any of them. It sounds like a fan. Oh, well, allow me to introduce you, ladies and gentlemen. I'll go a little bit quiet. That, assuming you can hear that, is my Mac Mini on full blast. It ain't one of them new fancy fandangled Mac Minis. It's a workhorse, this boy. Um, <laughs> and he's he's been working hard. I mean, that might be what it is, but I also think that my filters filter out the noise from that. So it probably isn't that. So I don't know. I'm, I'm not actually entirely sure. But it's, it's, not, a, it's not a powerful boy. <laughs> oh, it doesn't work for a VPN. Oh, that's sad. That's sad. I have a 27-inch Mac. I'm Mac then, I assume. Good. <laughs> I say that like I'm not interested. I definitely am. I'm I'm really into the whole like hearing about Apple rumors, especially with these new computers that they've got going on. Um Yeah, I mean to me cuz I love I love a bit of um I love a bit of Apple tech discussion. So now that I I have a an opportunity to talk about it, I'm all for it. Sorry, can you still hear the noise now? Because if you can, that is a concern. And I wouldn't know why that was, because the game sound is definitely louder than the computer. Anyway. Um, yeah, to me, like the... Um, the IMAX, or anything like that, and I guess it has it having its logical extreme in, in their so-called pro display... Um, are ridiculously overpriced and a complete waste of money. That's why I love the Mac Mini, because he's a non-screen boy, and that's why he's good value. Because I like, I like, you know, the Apple operating systems. Um, but I, I would never buy an iMac or something like that. I was very tempted by the new MacBook Air, though. Very tempted, but I can't justify finding money for that, but... It looked pretty good. It looked pretty good. I've just got two 
you know, 1080p monitors, and that's all the resolution you'll ever need. This stuff about, like, 5K IMAX or 6K Pro Display XDR is complete horse swallop. Like, it's just a complete extortion exercise. Um, and, you know, I've got a Mac with two screens. Don't get that with an iMac. So that's, that. I mean, that's my point of view on it. Um, but different products for, for different people. But yeah, maybe you should stop flogging it because it sounds like a dead workhorse. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, absolutely. It is true. And I was, I was very close, very close to getting myself uh, one of them new M1 Mac Minis, but the transition has begun, right? And there are going to be teething problems, there's going to be stuff that hasn't carried over correctly, and my computer still works, it just needs attention, and it needs to kind of be worked hard, isn't it? It's not dead yet, it's just trying its hardest, you know, it's trying its best. So I, I think I'm going I'm to keep it until... Because it, it won't update to Big Sur now, by the way. It's that old. Um, I'm going to keep it until at least the end of security updates, by which time maybe there'll be like an M2 chip Mac Mini. That's kind of what I'm waiting for. Um, I think that would be the most interesting thing to then transition to. Because I don't really want to be giving Apple money. They've got plenty enough money as it is. So I want to make one new Mac purchase, not a massively expensive one, and one that will last me as far into the future as possible. So therefore I'm using this one for as long as possible, and we'll then get a new one that hopefully lasts me as long as possible. So I do really apologise to all of you um, about the whole noise thing. Because it's not my computer, it can't be. If you can hear it while the desktop audio is on, then there is a separate problem. And for that, I apologise. Um, at the moment, I can't really diagnose what that problem would be. So I, I'm, I reckon we're just going to have to push on. <laughs> so let's do that. Right, okay, so, Death Hawk, we're going to put some items on. If we run out of items, by heck, we're going to do the lucky ticket stage. Is it still on? Is the, um, is Icy Desire still on? And I will turn up the game music because actually, uh, I reckon that I can. I'm just going to check my mic filters. Check they're all on. Because the gain is reduced so it doesn't sound terrible because it's, it's like the microphone sort of lost the plot, basically, at this point. I'm waiting for Blue to release, like, a next generation one. I hope that happens. I want to wait for that, because I don't want to get, like, a an old microphone that just costs the same as it did when it was new. Um, yeah, the stuff's in place. So I'll just, I'll increase the game sound, because apparently my mic's louder now. Which has been progressively doing. Um... <laughs> Interestingly, like, it, it, the game, um, which, in case you're wondering, is, like, how sensitive the microphone is to sound, how loudly it hears something, to paraphrase the science of it, um, has just steadily been going up, even though I haven't changed anything. Um, so, you know, I'm, I'm kind of battling with it. I'm, I'm kind of battling with it. Uh, but I guess as long as the game audio waveform is distinctly below my voice it should be fine what do we think of this currently is is this all right um watch reggae all night and watching reggae all day oh i'm big on that thank you very much i'm glad you're doing that and yes you can hear me oh that's good i like that and static pickle man's cheering us small bits thank you Especially after hearing that there might be a kind of antics of bits costing more than we thought. Um, but the amount that the creator receives is definitely $1 per 100 bits. On a scale of 1 to 10, how ugly are you? I mean, I don't know whether I I should be the judge of that, but probably quite, quite muggly, I'd, I'd say. <laughs> I dare say. Dare say I'd be quite muggly myself. Um, 
And there is a kind of running problem I do understand with these streams being quiet. And for that, once again, uh, I do apologise. We can try and remedy that. Um, but my microphone then may suddenly sound quite bad. Um, I'm going to bring it up a decibel um, and see if that works. I mean, I, I guess as long as I'm not too far into the yellow, that would be all right. It would be fine. We're going to bring it up two decibels. Uh, hopefully that works, and then I can bring the game sound up a tiny bit. Okay? So hopefully that is all good for you, and we've masked the problems <laughs> with um, with game sound, so that's good. Um, I don't. Maybe you're all just trying to drown me out completely. <laughs> and and you're like, oh, that sounds so much better now. I can't hear him. <laughs> oh dear. Right. Okay. Um, uh, goodbye, Cyber Harrison five one nine three, and welcome T Wrights. It has been ages. Hello. Um, what Android emulator do you use? He uses iPhone. He does indeed. Um, I feel like the best kind of flex you can do, um, with an iPhone for me anyway, is flexing how long you've kept an old device for. So this is an iPhone 7. There we go. Um, very sad that there's no headphone jack in it though. Still, it still isn't old enough to go back to those good old days. But anyway, Static Pickle Man, cheers, there's 25 more bits saying you should stream more. Wow. That's what I'm trying to do in this this time now. Get a bit more streaming in, because there is there is enjoyment to be to be found in it. The stream is a perfect opportunity for me to do the sign cheese. Yeah. iPhone success, me. You see, you know, actually, genuinely, even though it's an older phone than mine, I am quite jealous of that because I I I would like a headphone jack because oh my god, never in my life am I going to buy AirPods. For two distinct reasons. One, they're small and wireless, so I'll probably lose them. And two, Apple get rid of the headphone jack and then want to charge you money because of it. No, that is an unethical business practice. It's like, we've made we, we've made the brave decision to remove the plug from the iPhone box. I was like, oh thanks, but you're still charging the same amount, right? And just just not giving people a plug. Well, thanks for that. Much appreciated. I love that. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Apple. I really, I really feel in touch with your mission there. Screw them sometimes, honestly. Absolutely ridiculous. So I like Apple products, but I certainly do not want to give them money where they don't need it. Um, what we do need, however, is to thank... Oh, I see. Henteracoon, that's definitely how you pronounce that, and I shan't be told otherwise. Henteracoon, um, it's definitely not anything suspect in the first part of that name. <laughs> uh, it's like a sort of air conditioning reminds me of, a Henteracoon system. Like a very kind of stereotypical Scottish air conditioning system. Hentarakun! Hey, can you switch the Hentarakun on? It's getting quite hot in here. He says with a really, really terrible attempt at a Scottish accent. My apologies to Scottish people and people in general. <laughs> Thank you very much for swinging your Twitch Prime subscription my way. And apparently that is the intended pronunciation. Well, we like that. We like that. Oh, another language thing I found out. It's actually pronunciation, not pronunciation. I will always write it and say it pronunciation, but apparently it's not. Isn't that mad? Don't you think that's just mad? I find that mad. Anyway, um, Static Pickle Man has cheered us 50 more bits, congratulating us on nearly 100 viewers, some of which I've lost, probably from just talking about um, my little apple rant. <laughs> but I am sorry to Scottish people around the world, and people around the world, quite frankly. Okay, uh, let's use these items and get into here and have an attempt, shall we? Okay. Get your CPU off. We don't need it now. What's that? Woo! I can't... 
Good job I got a do not disturb on, but I don't know what that notification was. <laughs> I've got no clue. Hang on. Oh. I don't have any of my notifications set to that. What does that mean? <laughs> I don't know. I'm confused. Oh well. Only a razor. Oh, I should have been, shouldn't it? I am a I am a silly boy. Okay. Um yeah. Whoops. Don't push so early yet. But the mistake's been made and unfortunately, because of the nature of the stage, it's just the way it's gonna be. Okay. Okay, come on then. Come on then. Let's get going. We'll meet sure with what we've got here. See if we can just clear out them peon antics. I feel like we probably are going to have to lure it in a sense. Get some meat shielding out. Wait for Cray's legs to dispense with that. And CPU on now, I reckon. And, oh, that worked out very well for the money. That wasn't even deliberately planned. Okay. Let's see how we do, ladies and gentlemen. Let's see how we do. Ruin knocking back that teacher bear there. That's very nice. Knocking back the manic mohawk. CPU not the meat shielding. That's less nice. I need to be attentive to this because, of course, we've got the dragon that it's going to wait for. That's why I didn't really want to put it in because the CPU is going to wait for it very often. But probably more useful than a little cat. And there we go. There's another knockback. And this is my theory around manic mohawk. It might work out if we get insane Aurora luck which obviously we're currently not getting but i also feel like i probably shouldn't rely on that uh just you know for the simple facts that it's a no continue stage so you'd have to waste the energy in the items every single time to do the run so you know the interesting one let's see how we did you have to believe. I like that. You see, right? This is not a completely negligible effect on the Manic Mohawk. We've got to 89% on it. And encompassing here what Hairy Beast and Bright Coosie are saying is that and now, dude scrolling through, we need some long distance, right? We need Prisoner Cat, which is no gacha. And thankfully, ladies and gentlemen, it's January, ladies and gentlemen. It's heck in January. Prisoner Cat is this month. So this is my thought, right? We should probably try and get Prisoner Cat. And then maybe there is a chance of being able to do it. I like that in the chat there. Do you have a boyfriend or girlfriend? And then another person says, he's using the dual legs knockback combo. It's in reply to something completely different, but I thought they were related. And it's like, Reggie doesn't need relationships or love. <laughs> he's got the dual legs knockback combo. <laughs> oh dear. Prisoner Awakens is in the second half of the month. So we've got time to prepare, right? So that's good. And I'm aware, right, the, the Prisoner Cat is also, you know, I'm sure fairly useless in the first two forms anyway. Like, uh, regardless of the ability, I wouldn't be using it anyway. Um, but, yeah. I Usually, in trying to do a level, right, I wouldn't see that as promising. Um... But I kind of do, given where we are in, in, you know, not even finished into the future three moon yet. If you beat Manic Mohawk, I'm going to drop some bits. Yeah, I'm still broke, but whatever. Well, again, Random Neko, don't make yourself broke. Please don't. Um, but also, if you do want to donate to me, you have quite a lot of time to save up. <laughs> because I don't think we're going to be beating it any time massively soon. 
And I, I don't want pet insurance. I'm all right. Thank you. <laughs> that, that's fine. I, I'm, I, I'm happy to go without that. Right. Okay. Um, let's delete that promotionally video. And now we can tell Nightbot off when it has a go at me for doing something I've already done. Okay. So. Do we uh, give a go to the January stage? Is that the next thing we go for? What do you think? I'm going to set up a little poll. We're going to do a tiny little, tiny little minute long poll. And we say January stage. Yeah. Keep trying this level. Can't write fruitlessly. Not enough characters. Okay, start poll. Here we are. The poll has been started. Where can I find the poll on mobile? Yes, this unfortunately um, seems like a kind of regularly occurring problem uh, that I don't know the solution to. I don't know how you do it. It's like when I'm giving people advice on iMovie and they're trying to get help for mobile iMovie, which is where I first used iMovie, admittedly, but I don't have any understanding of it now. Um, <laughs> so much like with that, I, I can't help you. I have no idea. Um, where you where you find it. Your erasers get one shot, even with prisoner cat, it's probably not possible. Right, okay. Platinum Warrior 69. Excellent. Um can you find out for us, please, what level my eraser needs to be to have it not get one shotted? Um the treasure I've got I mean, I feel like the only relevant treasure, right, is all superior in Empire of Cats. Because the future treasures won't help with Manic Mohawk. So, we've got two wildly different answers there. So, I'll, I'll wait for some more, some more researched answers. He says, fully in the knowledge that he himself does not research things very often. Uh, we've got a huge majority for... Yeah, <laughs> for the January stage. So let's do that. Let's give it a go. Uh, I will accordingly change the stream title. Um, January stage in aid of Manic Mohawk success. Isn't that a snappy heckin' title? <laughs> we love it. Okay. Probably 40, level 40, not 40. I beat Manic Mohawk and my raise with plus 17. Well, maybe you're just really good. Do you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> that doesn't mean that it didn't get one-shotted. Um, but it, I guess we'll have to find this all out. Am I missing something here? No, it's Happy New Year, isn't it? There we go. We found it. We found it, we found it. Okay. Let's go for this slot, shall we? Oh, I'm not asking people to, like, check on their own, um, <laughs> their own Battlecats accounts. I'm talking, like, you know, the Battlecats wiki. You need to cross-reference the damage of Manic Mohawk with the health of a Razor, um, and you might need to use the Battlecats speaker to get it at different levels. But Henterkin, which is, I'm just going to say it like that from now on, um, su suggests that it is 25 plus, and I mean heck. If it is, that's pretty spicy. We're all about that. We're definitely all for that. And my meat shielding is going to beat this level. Makes a nice change, doesn't it? You only get a rare chance anyways. Oh yeah. 
I didn't... I didn't consider this. We don't need to beat the entire January stage. But I feel like that's what I want to do. Because it both gives us some stream content, and I'm happy to use my leaderships. Um, and gives us a chance of getting it without using a treasure radar, which I prefer because we do only have five. But I was intending to just try and do the whole thing anyway. I didn't remember that, you know, beating the last stage in the event doesn't necessarily give you the thing. But I think we're going to do it in this way anyway. Ah, Nochete. I remember Nochete. Oh, we're getting some OGs round here. Hey guys, do you remember me? I'm Reggie. I was doing a stream when you were here. <laughs> wow. I just checked an eraser at level 45. 45? Can tank an attack from Manic Mohawk? If that's the case, that tells us two things. We're not going to try and make that happen. One. Oh, but Hentera Kun says I'm right. Come on, guys. <laughs> Manic Mohawk does 14k damage, and a Razor at plus 10 has 10k. Okay. Right. 20 plus tw plus 25. Oh my god! I thought you meant level 25. Oh, I don't like you anymore. <laughs> Boo! <laughs> No, but that is actually quite worrying. Um, oh dear. Right, well, we're not going to try and do that. I didn't realise that's what you meant. There's actually no discordance. Um, so, my apologies there. I thought you meant level 25, which is why I was so confused at why the numbers were so different. Wow. Um, that, is a, that is a chunky wow from me. I'm just going to watch an ad for energy. Because we love that. Bit of ad revenue for Ponos. Bit of energy for us. Nice, nice. Um, but yeah, no. If it, if le level plus 25 is needed, I'm not going to expect that from myself or from anyone else uh, in the tutorial. So we're just going to have to see if Prisoner works. Um, in other news, that ad was an Apple TV Plus ad. <laughs> we were talking about Apple in the stream and how I'm not going to give them any more money. And then, irony of ironies, an Apple TV Plus ad comes up. I mean, it's not my job to disparage Apple TV Plus. But has anyone seen anything that appeals to them for them to want to give it a go? I haven't even done a free trial of it yet. I'm currently on a free trial of BritBox and I'm actually enjoying that quite a lot. Um, quite a lot of good stuff on there. Um, but Apple TV Plus, I haven't seen anything in the advertising for that that makes me think, yeah. Everything just seems a bit, eh. Which surprises me, you know. I guess Apple are human as well, somewhere along the line. Although you wouldn't think the way that they work with Epic Games, but there we go. Will not work the way that they treat Epic Games. Um, and yes, that is me siding with Fortnite. Their App Store policies are dreadful. Um, but they make, I guess they make mistakes like, like everyone else does, but like mistakes in like not achieving rather than mistakes that we all point out that Apple make, but which they, they deem as just Apple knowing best. But there we go. The law of equivalent exchange. I, I don't, I don't, I don't, I what's, what's that mean? What's, what's that? What's that? What's that? <laughs> what's that? <laughs> eh? What's that? <laughs> Tell me, what's that? What's that? I dunno, dunno, dunno. What's that? Do you have Lil Nyandam for the slow proc? The point I've got to in Stories of Legend in this account is literally to the end of the Aruran subchapter and get an Aruran jailbreak tunnel. No further. Uh, that is the point I've got to specifically for that purpose. And I didn't intend to go any further on the beginner account because I don't know how much further we actually can realistically go. No gacha. 
By the way, Prisoner Cat is very horrible. Well, I mean, they're in prison. You'd expect that, wouldn't you? So you have to stack and protect them extremely carefully because their recharge time is quite long. Well, exactly. I, I, I'm going to be CPU in it, kind of, regardless, right? Because it's just, it, it's a much easier time. I mean, admittedly, it is no continues. So it's not quite the same CPU benefit as on a continue stage, but I still think that's the best way to do these stages, especially like the Crazed Cat or Manic Mohawk type ones. Maybe when it's kind of more specific strats needed, like Manic Flying or uh, Manic King Dragon or Manic Island, maybe not, but equally, there is not a hope in heck of doing them on the beginner account. I just thought that maybe Manic Mohawk would be possible through this route, but we'll have to see. It's it's a good go. My first try at Manic Mohawk, I got 89%. So did we. So did we just now. So that's an exciting one. The way Epic dealt with it is a bit scummy. I'd be interested to hear on your, your view as to why that is. Because, I mean, from my point of view, Apple are a trillion dollar company. They do not need in any single conceivable way need to be charging taxes on the App Store. And they should only really be taxing companies that are richer than themselves. And, oh wait, that's, oh yeah, that's pretty much no one. Um, so I think it's completely wrong for them to be charging any tax on the App Store, let alone taking money off of in-app purchases, which have nothing to do with them and do not benefit from Apple's service. It is unconscionable, and I'm actually quite disappointed in myself that I didn't know about this before, and I've been buying platinum tickets, maybe only like one or two, probably about two, two or three, probably two, I think, in Battle Cats, and that money has been, a bit of that money has been going to Apple. That's awful. Don't taxes go to the government? Well, by tax, I'm using it as a kind of deprecating term on Apple, like they shouldn't be taxing people, because obviously that is a government's position to do and not Apple's own. So I'm kind of calling it tax, but it's actually a levy. I think that's right. I think there is a slight difference between the word tax and the word levy, and I can't think of what they are, but I believe it's an App Store levy um, rather than tax. But yeah, I, I think it's, it's completely unacceptable for them to be taking any money off of App Store developers. I mean, I'm glad what's been done recently, you know, half tax reduction on smaller developers, but this should be none at all. Apple are in absolutely no position of needing to make this charge to people at all. And I'll do my very best not to spend any money on the App Store while this remains the case. I think it's just absolutely wrong for Apple to be taking money in that way. Same as I try and avoid YouTube streaming because they shouldn't be taking that much of Super Chat. We are the consumers, I like to say, right? Where we put our money is our influence in this capitalist world. And the less we think about where we put our money, the more problematic and less fair capitalism becomes. We need to regulate it as best we can by putting our money towards companies that do good and have good business practices. We also definitely need government intervention, right? I don't think the free market can exist without that. But we need to do our bit as well. And as the saying goes, put your money where your mouth is, although I don't think that's the right saying for the context. Put your money into where it's deserved and not into people who are exploiting you for your money and taking it for no good reason. Like, I believe, Apple largely do. Regit spitting facts, no printer. I love that, because it's facts, like a fax machine. 
<laughs> I, I, I assume that's deliberate. That's just brilliant. I love that. <laughs> don't talk politics. I'm afraid if you don't want me talking politics, you're in the wrong place. But I think, actually, it's kind of a principle to live by more than a political statement to be careful about where you put your money and really think about whether where you're putting your money deserves your money. That's, I think, an important thing to live by, not telling you where you should put your money, just telling you to, advising you, probably a better term, to think about where you're putting your money. Because that is how we as consumers can influence the market to better help us. Reggit, wanna be my boyfriend? Ooh, ooh. Don't tie me down, Mark Zero D. You seem very needy wanting me to pronounce your name differently. <laughs> okay. Um, we've got um, 30 cat food and one leadership and no thingaling. Oh, that's a shame. But there's a two star version, so let's keep going. Oh, heck yeah. Do, do, do. <laughs> Just want to kiss you, Uwu. Let's not make this get too unfamily friendly PG clean, but I'm 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 flattered. I'm grateful. Um, I wish Yuri felt the same way. <laughs> yeah, she's fictional, but don't tell me that. I know, I know in my heart. It's just, it's just sad. She is. <laughs> Right, okay. Wanna be friends on Discord? <laughs> if I didn't know who you were from the last stream, I think you were one of those those dangerous YouTube bots that steal your channel when you click on the link. You wanna be Discord friends? <laughs> I'm being savage towards my viewers today, I do apologize. Um I don't usually accept friend requests on Discord because I i mean, I'll, I'll respond to a DM from anyone unless it's like meaningless or just trying to spam me for no good reason. So I mean, from that point of view, I'll just respond to anyone. And that's kind of like what you do when you friend someone on Discord. I think m mostly my friends on Discord are people I, I know from real life. God, do you guys remember real life? The outside. I don't know why I'm romanticising that. I didn't go outside very much. In fact, I went outside more often because of coronavirus. And, the, you know, I like... I like social distancing. I feel very awkward and uncomfortable having to walk closely to people. And feel very sad when people consciously avoid me in the street. Now they're doing it for health reasons. So that's kind of much better for my mental health because I don't worry about it anymore. It's much nicer, I think. But anyway... There's, there's plenty of arguments for why it's not been great for a whole lot of people. Don't think I don't recognise that. Why are we saying Obama? Incredible. He found a good thing about Corona. I mean, I guess not the virus itself. You know, there's nothing particularly good. No, nothing good about it killing people. But the effect of it, I think there are some good things, definitely. The necessity of people working at home has made companies such as Twitter realise that people can just work from home and it's letting all its employees work from home forever if they want to. Big up Twitter. Thank you, Twitter. There's been less polluting travel, a lot less flight in this time, so less of an impact on the atmosphere. And for introverts like me, and I imagine some of you, We've had a much more comfortable time at home or distanced from people where we don't like being in busy crowds. So yes, I think there have been a lot of positive effects from the restrictions, etc. that have been put in place because of the coronavirus. It has decimated the mental health of some people and I don't want to appear like I'm neglecting that, but there has certainly been some positive aspects to it as well. School from home sucks though. You see, that's a fair point for you. Like, my commiserations to you. I love learning at home. I would do it 
completely if I could. I'm far, far, far more comfortable learning from home and would really appreciate the right to be able to. And I think that's the important thing. People should be able to have the right to work and learn from home. Right, okay. More energy. Let's go. But some people thrive off social contact. I get that. You know, I do have some friends. I miss them. I miss going to the pub. <laughs> it's just less interaction and more videos and work. You see, I love that. Rather than having lectures to physically go to, which means hauling yourself out of bed and getting dressed, etc. There's one pre-recorded that I can pause and wind forward in any place I like so that I can get all my notes down and kind of just sift through very quickly the irrelevant bits. In whatever I choose to wear or don't want to be rude here, but not wear, at that given time, because it's literally just me sat on my computer learning from a pre-recorded video. I think that's a fantastically better way of learning, but that's that's my own personal point of view. The lack of social contact has been dreadful for some people, and I, I've missed people as well, so I, I get that in a small sense. I would like to learn and stuff from home, but I get distracted too easily. Get yeah, getting into working at home is is a you know a transition that's not going to be instant and i get distracted all the time i'm not some kind of productivity whiz but i try and listen to them so laura vanderkam for example is is one well, she's written a book called the new corner office based on like the sort of work at home necessity and tips on working at home and it's kind of tips from it have been podcastified um if you want to listen to them and, and there are some useful pointers in there for being able to work at home, but definitely it's a land of temptation, right? Whereas I guess you have the temptation of the coffee shop if you're not stingy like me when you go to a physical workplace, etc. At home, you've got your entire fridge before you and your TV and your bed. So yeah, you, you know, there's a lot of distractions and temptations at home and it's difficult to make that transition to it. I just know I feel a lot more comfortable in the home environment and the time I waste, you know, not doing work, probably still isn't as bad as travelling time to and from actual physical engagements. And if it is just as bad, well, at least I'm enjoying myself during that time, rather than being in sort of anxious, close contact to people that I really don't enjoy. Walking in, having had to haul myself out of bed physically to get to an actual physical learning appointment. Whenever I'm home, I just want to play games, yet yeah, to be fair. I mean, I've been having a problem with my web browser, notably. I, I load that up to go to my Google Drive, whatever, for me, uh, for me write, me write in of me, me university things, click, 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 you know. And then I just get distract. I go to YouTube to screenshot something specific, and then I just end up watching YouTube. I did that for two hours. I just started binging Marcus Brownlee. He seems like a lovely man, by the way. Recently gotten to him. Nice man. But wasn't very productive. So that's something I need to work on. Not getting distracted by that sort of thing. Um, and, you know, it would be nice to be able to kind of um, open the relevant web pages. Like, I mean, I can do that, probably. There's a thing on Mac called Automator where you could probably do that from. Like, run a, a sort of is it a script? I don't know if you call it that. A workflow? Yeah. To open that specific web page and like bar you from anything else. It probably could be done. I probably should do it. There's ways to um there's there's ways to stop yourself from uh, doing that sort of thing. But you know what really annoys me on that note actually? Screen time on my Mac. It, it, well it just doesn't work as well as I'd want it to. As well as not being that customizable. Having a YouTube channel, I, you know, have a YouTube studio, right? I mean, we all do if we have a channel, but, you know, just looking at comments, etc. on it. Now, 
I'm happy with myself using that all the time because I'm working on the channel, responding to comments, etc. That's a good thing. But screen time applies its screen time limit to both YouTube.com and Studio.YouTube.com even though I've set it up for them to be treated completely differently and I can't seem to find a way to make it treat them differently. So that is really quite annoying, the same limits coming into place because ideally it would say uh -uh, get off YouTube now, stop watching the same Tom Scott video you watched yesterday, I know it's good but do something more productive. Go to YouTube Studio which you're allowed to go to maybe, except it doesn't let me because that's like yeah, you're also limited on that. I only had to click a couple of buttons to um, get access back to it. But it still really irritates me that what I've put in place that should make it work doesn't work. Okay. Hangover. Should I... No, I won't treasure radar. I think I'll just do the three stars and then then treasure radar one of the stages if if it doesn't work. <laughs> Is Thunder <Thundia> good? <laughs> Looks are all you need. <laughs> Let's not objectify Thunder. She she fulfills a uh, a sort of I guess you'd call it work of a battle cat's unit to defeat enemies. Let's not, let's not treat Thundia like an object. Yeah, she might not be the best unit, but she still does her job well. She tries her hardest, and you know what? We should appreciate the work she does. And not view her as a, something to ogle at. Yeah? Have a bit more respect for the women's. No, but actually do. We should all respect the women's. Because it's just a good thing to do, respecting people. All people. But anyway. You may say Thundia doesn't have feelings, but she does. I've heard from her. She's spoken to me. <laughs> she hasn't. <laughs> but I don't know about you. I think sometimes it's quite nice to treat inanimate things like they have feelings. Maybe that makes me sound a bit mental, but think of it this way. How many of you say thank you to Siri when Siri does something useful for you, slash other voice assistant, right? You don't need to do that, but I'll always say, thanks Siri, it's nice of you. And Siri goes, no problem, and then just sort of disappears. And I was like, that's all very nice, you know. You're like practicing good manners by being nice to your, your little voice assistant. I always think that's a very nice thing to do. And then you're sort of ingraining the habit of, of good manners. I don't use them. No, I mean, I, voice assistants aren't massively useful. I don't use them very often, I'll tell you that. Um, although I recently found you can tell Siri to delete all alarms, which is very useful because the menu on the iPad for deleting alarms is now, for some reason, incredibly finicky and difficult to actually get it to work. So it's nice to have Siri do that instead. And also, yes. I am a feminist and I think you should all be because what feminism means at its heart is equality and the quest for that. Unfortunately, and you know, I find feminist theory very interesting and I sort of read into it now and then in, in an academic context, is that in our sort of post-feminist world, which is sort of what it's largely agreed we live in, what I'd call the fourth wave of feminism has appeared where you have people who just quite simply hate men because they're men and criticise all men as being exactly like the worst example of a man they've ever met and these people are just terrible people because they are not searching for any kind of equality at all they want to put oppression on a different group of people men this time where it was women before and that is not okay and I think these people need to be called out on it and we need to remember that actually equality is not having a go at any group of people it is being respectful towards everyone so yeah I am a feminist probably describe myself as a 
first or second wave feminist. There's three official waves, and I would argue there is a fourth one, which is often called post-feminism. For a breakdown of branches of feminism, check out my video. <laughs> Housewife Cat and the Branches of Feminism, because this was part of my politics um, A-level. And I think it is really interesting. Feminist theory is very interesting, I would argue. And still as relevant as it has been for a very long time in cultural discussion. <laughs> Sometimes I say thanks for video game characters. That's nice. I like that. I get too angry at video games to do that. That's why I'm not a proper gamer. Because I just... <laughs> I, just, I can't I can't do it it's weird we need to advocate for people to respect other people absolutely I think that's a very nice summary of it it is weird isn't it that the notion of feminism being about equality has actually kind of gone out the window for a lot of feminists I think it is very sad and actually if you believe in equality you are a feminist and don't let the twisted forms of it that you see on places like Twitter and well, largely social media. Don't let that make you think that you're not a feminist. Right. Three star of this stage. Very exciting. There was a campaign in, I think it was 2000 and... Between 2010 and 2015... I know that because Ed Miliband was prominent in it and those were kind of his years <laughs> as leader of the Labour Party. So I, it was some point within then anyway. There was a campaign called This Is What A Feminist Looks Like and it was a t-shirt that people would wear and the whole point was that anyone would wear it because it is just an ideology when it's actually proper feminism of respect and equality. So, I don't want to tap res to respond. Go away, shortcuts. Go away! I don't know what that means. I'd never set up a shortcut like that, I'm worried. Um, and the whole point was is that en anyone would be wearing that. And there is nothing that a feminist looks like. Because anyone can and should be believing in equality. And that's kind of the point. The idea of androgyny not actually looking at gender labels at all and just seeing people as people. Not necessarily in a non-binary sense, just in a sense of people. Not identifying as neither male nor female, just we have people. And that is by far the best way to think of it because then you're just treating people equally. Something I hate is that people can just deny everything you say in an argument and keep saying the same thing and you can't do anything about it. Mm. Yeah. I mean, that, that's something I, I do wonder about because I think there is almost absolutely no viable argument for no platforming people because it's not your right to tell people whether they should be able to have a voice or not. But then also, if they're not going to engage in proper argument with people and they are just going to spout something that isn't true repeatedly and just shout over you, then I guess you'd have to no-platform them on the basis of them not being willing to enter a discussion. But I think it is very dangerous and frankly wrong to do it on the basis of the opinions they hold. If you think someone's got a really stupid opinion or a very damaging opinion, I think if they've got a stupid opinion, it's best to ignore them. But if they've got a damaging opinion, you tackle it. If their opinion is damaging and very clearly wrong to you, you should very easily be able to show them that they're wrong and absolutely tear them down through logical argument rather than telling them they can't appear on a program, which is only going to just incite more people to agree with them because they'll be marginalised. Right, okay. Could you do a Lucas impression? I haven't done a Lucas impression in a while. I feel like I owe it to Lucas not to do a Lucas impression. 
If you want to hear me and Lucas, though, um, we had a nice old sing song at New Year's. Um, I assume Lucas's stream archive will still be up. Um, it was like, it was like, screw Battle Cats, I want to sing for New Year's. It's called something like that. Anyway, we sang Com Zusa Tud at the end of it, and it was fantastic. <laughs> I enjoyed it so much, and it sounded amazing. I loved it. Absolutely supreme content. Um, so I guess I'd say check that one out. And here's what I want to check out here. Tfinity Owo has cheered us 200 bits. Thank you very, very much indeed. Reggit good bits go brrrr. It's occurred to me now that the the um, the bits might be in reference to the bits that have been cheered, not necessarily the Reggit good bit where he talked, where, so where he printed facts, which is my new favorite thing. I am a fax printer. <laughs> I print straight facts. <laughs> I, I'm glad you think so. I mean, don't take what I say at face value, but I'm very happy to give reasoning for my opinion. Because I think if you have an opinion, you should have reasoning for it. Otherwise, you shouldn't really be holding that opinion. Because you don't have a reason for having it. There should be reasoning and thought behind your opinion. There should be a reason why you hold it. I'm happy to always explain it. There we go. I want your opinion about this statement I've heard about discrimination. We need to admit we see people's differences to be able to acknowledge the fact that they might be mistreated and ignoring the differences is like denying the fact that there's injustice. Uh, hang on. I'll read that again in a sec. Just after. Do you prefer bits or subs? I prefer bits, and I'll tell you why. Because Twitch takes 50% of what you spend when you subscribe and only about 20 or so, at least I thought, percent of bits. So it is much more efficient if you are intending to donate to me to do it via bits. And actually the best way is to donate via Streamlabs. Streamlabs don't take a cut. The only money that is taken off it is PayPal charges and they're not nearly as much as any of the other forms of donation. And so that is the best way for you to send money to me if that is what you want to do. Otherwise, and in increasing amounts as you go into YouTube's methods for doing this or Twitch subscriptions, you are just giving money to a platform with, and I imagine you will agree, a lot of money itself. So Streamlabs donations are by far the best way to do it. But for your convenience, I'm going to keep, you know, every avenue of donating open. But the Streamlabs is set up, so it should it should represent you if you do donate that way. So let's go back to this thing here. I want your opinion about the statement I've heard about discrimination. We need to admit we see people's differences to be able to acknowledge the fact that they might be mistreated. And ignoring the differences is like denying the fact that there's injustice. Okay, so I think I get that. So... There's the idea that I kind of broadly hold that we should see people as people and that is the best way towards respect and seeing people equally and being nice to people and being, well, nice to your fellow human, right? Because that's what it's all about, humanity rather than different groups of people. But then, if you do that, people who are sort of disadvantaged are just brought onto the same plane as people who are not disadvantaged. And I guess that is to say that you, you, how much you agree with that depends on how much you see there as being a sort of ingrained disadvantage. I am of the belief personally that if we structure the world around seeing everyone as a human being, then we can eliminate these kinds of inequalities, right? If the police see everyone as a human being, then logically through that, if that actual belief is executed properly, there won't be police discrimination against ethnic minorities, right? So that is my personal view. Some people would say that 
you can't actually eliminate these in inequalities. They're so ingrained into society, we need to still see the groups of disadvantaged ethnic minorities, oppressed women in the workplace, etc., and address those problems first. But I think the problem is, is that when we do that, we get people like fourth wave feminists who just despise men because they are not women or because they are men or because a man they're aware of has done something bad. So I think fundamentally, human nature is just too accusatory and seeking a fight with someone to f for seeing people differently to work. So my belief is that we shouldn't see people in different groups. We should see people as human beings and that's why. But I understand the point that your teacher made. I can understand the point that that came from. And thank you so much for all of your kind words. Every stream, my respect for Reggit goes up. Love those little emojis there. Um, I see personality, so if someone's mean or rude, I don't like them. But if they're kind, I don't mind like them. Exactly. This is actually an argument I made to someone when they said that Monica was really attractive. I said, but yes, Monica is a terrible person, though. Doki Doki, by the way, in case you're wondering why I'm just saying Monica randomly. Anyway, but I completely agree with that point of view. Reggae is a legit philosopher. Really love that you're saying that, because I did philosophy A-level. I like philosophy, and political philosophy really interests me, especially as well, and also economic philosophy, as I was talking about before, with this sort of Apple stuff and us being consumers, the power somewhat lying with us. What are you studying right now? Possibly the wrong thing, right? Um, it's uh, TV and film stuff. Um, but I mean, if I'm able to get like grants for it, I'd love to continue like to do sort of postgraduate philosophy stuff. But the current degree is to be able to ideally become like a freelance editor or something like that and make money off of that. But thank you ever so much for what you've been saying. I need to, however, go to dinner. We've got just enough energy to do this stage, so we'll do this now. Um, but I do need to go downstairs. Um, do, do, do. As a resident from the UK, what's your opinion on the current US political situation? Um, I mean, long time inhabitants of streams have known that I have a lot of stuff about American culture that I'm scared about. Gun culture, freedom of speech to the point of being able to offend whoever you want, and health insurance being required, there being no free access to healthcare for everyone, being the things that particularly worry me. But although this will then make me sound like a hypocrite for saying this just after criticizing American culture, I feel like I shouldn't, wherever I don't have massively strong opinions, comment on another country's politics. Those things like do really concern me about America, so much so that I feel I should voice that concern, because it really worries me that you have, you'd have to pay for healthcare, pay for insurance, so that you don't have to pay for individual bits of healthcare. I think that is really, really worrying that even something like that can't be nationalised. But as for like normal kind of political stuff that we get in the UK as well, as long as due process is followed, which it seems like it is being, reluctantly by old Trumpet, but he's letting Joe Biden in, in a sort of due democratic process, almost just about enough for democracy to continue, then that's fine and something I don't feel I need to comment on. As long as he steps aside when he needs to and lets Joe Biden in, that's fine. I don't see an issue with him asking for an audit of the election because I think overwhelmingly likely will prove that he's lying in saying that there's been voter fraud, right? He can ask for an investigation. I think that's perfectly fine for them to do one because I think it will make it very clear and prove to Trump maybe once and for all that he did actually lose that election. Just as long as he lets Joe Biden in while he's having that fight, I think there is no issue. And then maybe that can be a nice victory for truth. Trump eventually conceding the election after it's found there's been no fraud at all, as we're all very sure that there has been none. 
I will see you all in the future. Thank you ever so much for all your thoughtful comments and just things you've been saying that have been so interesting this stream. And you've all been so very nice. So thank you for all of that. And I will see you again, hopefully soon. The idea of a karaoke stream at some point, by the way, this was a chat quite a while ago. Sounds great. So hopefully let's do that if the timings work or if the timings don't work, a karaoke stream at some point. I'll see you later. Goodbye. Thank you very much for coming along, everybody. Ta-ra.